Hello, my name is Owen Matthews, and I teach at the Lovett School. This will be our first lesson on how to program fractals. So first of all, I want to explain what a fractal is. It's a geometric object, something that you can draw and you can see, and it has a few characteristics, such as self-similarity across scale and a recursive definition. Here you see examples of two fractals. Um, on the left is a tree, on the right is a Sierpinski triangle. You'll notice that the tree and the triangle exhibit this idea of self-similarity across scale. You should be able to look at the tree and see that it contains smaller and smaller copies of itself, and the same is true of the triangle. If you were to repeat these copies indefinitely, you would see that you can go infinitely and get infinite amount of detail, but yet you can see that the area that they occupy is in fact finite. So you can take a very simple process and generate a very complex object. For instance, with the tree, you're taking the basic trunk or branch, which you see on the left, and adding the uh, split, the fork of branches, and if one has length one and then the smaller branches have length of one half, if you actually continue that process indefinitely, you see the mathematical sum there, one plus two times a half plus four times a quarter, and that infinite sum, of course, is equal to infinity. So if you, to, if you were to repeat this process indefinitely, you would end up with a line of infinite length, but uh, the line would fit inside a finite area. So you get a simple process such as this progression here, and you end up with a complex result. So now I want to explain exactly what a recursive definition is. The idea of defining something in terms of itself, and in the case of a tree, we're talking about defining a tree as just a trunk, but then putting two smaller trees at the top of that trunk. So for instance, if we were to draw a tree, we would start by drawing a trunk, and then we want to create this smaller tree on the right-hand side. We're going to just deal with the right-hand side right now, but of course to create a full tree you would be drawing the left-hand tree eventually too. So to draw this right-hand tree though, we need to now draw the trunk. And now when we get to the top of the trunk, we want to draw the right-hand tree for that tree, which looks like this. Now to draw this tree, we want to draw its trunk and draw the smaller tree on the right-hand side at the top of that trunk. So you can see where we're going. We can repeat this process ad nauseum, but let's go ahead and, and cut to the chase and explain the most important feature of a recursive algorithm. When you design recursion, you need to make an assumption, a leap of faith, that your algorithm will in fact generate the thing you're trying to create. So let's assume that when we draw a tree, when we say draw a tree at the top of the trunk, that it will in fact create a tree as we see here. Now we're at the base of the subtree and we need to create the second subtree at the top of the trunk. So we turn the turtle and then we're going to create the left subtree at the top of the trunk where you see the turtle. So there's the second subtree, the left subtree. But what you see highlighted now is that full subtree for the diagonal trunk and we need to know what to do before we finish with that tree. The answer of course is that we need to move the turtle from the top of that trunk that you see down to the bottom. We are now at the top of the trunk of the larger diagonal tree and ready to draw the left subtree. So now we have a basic idea of what our algorithm might be. To draw a tree, you would draw first the trunk, you would draw the two subtrees, and then you go back to the base of the trunk. The really important part about this algorithm is going back to the base of the trunk because when we assumed that we could in fact draw a tree, the assumption took into account that we had to be at the base of the tree at the end of our procedure. 
So in terms of Java code, what recursion amounts to is a method that calls itself. If you think about that for a second, a method that calls itself over and over again, you'll realize that that would create um, a situation like an infinite loop. So the question is now how do we stop ourselves from going forever? Uh, a, a fractal, of course, is mathematically infinite, but when we actually generate one on a computer, we need to choose some point at which to stop. We call that our base case. Uh, it's where the recursion bottoms out or stops, and if we don't provide any arguments to a method, we can never have a base case. We need to have some kind of context in order to know when to stop. So here is a better pseudocode algorithm. We need to choose some depth for the tree and some kind of trunk size because we of course want to decrease the size of each successive tree. And so basically if the depth is 1, which is our base case, we want to just draw a trunk. Otherwise, we're going to draw a trunk and then draw the two smaller trees. And notice uh, the most important feature is that we decrease the depth of these smaller trees and the trunk size. When we're done, we have to go back to the base of the trunk because of our assumption that when we draw a tree, we end at the base of the trunk. Now I'm going to go over to JavaWide and let's create this code in JavaWide. I'm going to create a new program and I'm going to name it Tree Turtle. But remember that you have to create this code inside your directory. So in my case it would be Matthews and I'm going to create an, a, a folder underneath that called Assignment 1. Now, when you get these options, probably the best is to click Create Application. So here's our application. Before we actually get started coding our tree method, there are two things we need to do. We need to import edu.georgiatech.media programming dot star and we need to change one thing about the declaration of the class so that it extends the turtle class. Once we've done that we should be good to go. So recall that we have a tree method and we, just, we determined in our pseudocode that it needed two arguments. One was the depth, that would be an integer, and one was the trunk size. We'll make that a double now we have the base case if depth is equal to 1 then we decided that you should just go forward the size of the trunk otherwise this is our recursive case we go forward the size of the trunk then we need to create our two subtrees. So we're at, if we're at the top facing straight up, we need to turn right 45 degrees and then do our smaller tree. So here's the recursive call. Now depth for this subtree is going to be one, one less than the current depth. So depth minus one. Trunk size needs to also decrease we could decrease it linearly, but a geometric decrease is actually more appropriate in this case. You can experiment with these kinds of things to get different effects, but I'm going to show you the geometric decrease. And I will make it 0.6. That generates a pretty nice looking tree. 
So once we've created this tree, and we're back at the base of this tree, now we need to turn and do our next tree. If we've turned right 45 degrees, now we need to turn left 90 degrees, 2 times 45, so that we're facing off to the left. We do our second tree. Now, once we are finished with this tree, we need to remember to point back up again. So 45 degrees to the right. Because the last thing we're going to do, after we've done all of the rest, is we're going to go backwards the same amount of the trunk size. So that we'll wind up at the bottom of our tree. Remember that this last statement is very important and required because of our assumption that when we finish with a tree, we always have to end up at the bottom of the trunk. So now we should be able to create our turtle and draw a tree. When I construct my tree turtle, it'll automatically create a window, which is 750 by 750. So I'm going to do a little bit of extra work here to move it to the bottom of that window so that we have the maximum amount of room to draw it. This is a good point to remind you that you can consult the documentation for the turtle class. If you click on Turtle API from the Java-wide Computer Science Collaborative site, you will see documentation. Now the turtle class that comes up by default does not give you details on all the methods. Those are actually all part of Simple Turtle right here. So if you look at Simple Turtle, you will see all the methods that you can use to move the turtle around and change the pen color and whatnot. So for instance, here we have forward. And I'm actually looking for a method to move the turtle, which is move to right here. And then we also, I wanted to see set pen down right here. So I'll go back here. I need to say set pen down to false so that when I move it, it does not draw a line. Move to, and I want it to be in the middle on the x dimension and basically right at the bottom on the uh, y dimension. So I'll go to 740, leave 10 pixels of slop. So now that I'm down at the bottom, I'm going to draw my tree. Let's make this uh, size 200. No, that's depth. Sorry, let's make this depth mm, 14 and trunk length 200. Whoops, you see I've made an error. I have to refer to my tree turtle because I'm in the main method which is static. There we go. And there is my tree. I will make one note at this point which is that if you create something that is too large to fit on the screen, say something like this, rather than going off the screen and coming back on properly, the turtle will keep drawing as it gets to the edge of the screen and everything will get messed up. So if you do see something that you don't expect, you might make sure that you're not getting off the edge of the screen. So you'll notice here my turtle did not end up where it started, and as a result, I didn't get the tree that I expected. So do be careful about size. Okay, I think that should wrap it up. Good luck.